Hi, everybody. Welcome to week nine of Principles of Management. I apologize that we're not all together today, but I think maybe with a shortened week, this will work out well for several in the class. It gives you a little more time to get your work caught up and to travel if need be to be with your families. And I'm pretty sure we're all looking forward to a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. I wanted to chat just briefly in this short video on human resource management. We've talked a little bit about control in the classroom, and your book does a great job of visiting that. The discussion question that you have this week also really pulls out a lot of that information. The last chapters on human resource management, and in particular, strategic human resource management, which is something that I would like to address today. What would you like to know about human resource management? As many of you know, I spent a lot of time as a manager in human resources. And so I am going to set aside a few minutes in class after our team presentations to let you ask whatever questions you might have, whether it's um, somebody in your family wasn't hired and you think it was discrimination, is that legal, or a pay violation, something about unions, anything and everything that you'd like to know about the hiring process or a firing process, I'm happy to address. So think about that for just a little bit. But today, we're going to talk about strategic human resource management, which is where it really should be. Many of you, when you think of human resource management, think of the place where you go to fill out paperwork, your medical benefits get turned into, and maybe you get sent there if there's a problem at work that you want to report or that you were reported maybe for some sort of issue. And it's kind of like going to the principal's office. But in reality, for a highly functioning organization, human resource management really should be a strategic aspect of that organization. And the goal is to turn your company or organization into a high, high, high performance work system. And what that means is that we truly are vested in the humans within the organization. And, you know, we've talked all term about the fact that we actually create organizations filled with other humans because it's the job is bigger than what we can do by ourselves and that it is getting work done through others that we deliver great products or great services. And if you look at this definition on the screen, particularly the last phrase, truly treating employees as its main asset. There is a lot of research on this in the human resource arena about um, the benefits of high performance work systems and the fact that they actually can be a competitive competitive advantage in this difficult work um, environment. On the screen, you'll see some of the main uh, foundations of HPWS, as we call them, high performance work systems. Um, the worker is actively involved, so involved in decisions and participates in um, the work itself in a decision-making way. For instance, you will often see high-performance systems in organic organizations, flat horizontal organizations, where a lot of the idea rises from the trenches where the work is actually done. And employees are incentivized with the type of motivational tools that actually truly motivate them, which we just spent some time talking about again in, in the class. And then the third bullet on training and development, I like to think of it as learning. High performance systems tend to be learning organizations. We mentioned the term learning organization earlier in the course as well. But this is one where learning and continual improvement through learning is an ongoing process and is highly valued. And how can we spend time on all of these types of uh, processes? is technology has allowed us to take some of the very mundane record keeping that actually provides us with good data so we can make good strategic decisions by using technology. Modern technology has really freed up HR professionals to do more strategic work. So um, if I were going to give you the bottom line of my years in human resource management and management in general, it would be this. If you do nothing else well, hire well. It will help you eliminate disciplinary problems, terminations, um, disputes, 
um, training issues, all kinds of things. And when I talk about training, hiring well, I talk about hiring people with the right stuff, people who are a good fit for your organization, the organizational values, the mission. Clearly, they need to have a certain level of talent and skills, but then you can shape them and you can um, help them learn the more technical skills. And if you hire people who are a good fit for your organization, they will thrive there and everything comes together. And you just have to take it from experience. It truly works. Here are some of the bubbles here um, <clears throat> are really just um, a listing of the traditional foundational areas of human resource management. And you can take a look at those. I don't think any of those are a surprise to you. And they fit in quite well with the um, management foundations of planning, organizing organizing, leading, and controlling. Many of those are found in several of these areas. I wanted to touch on training because in the past, training has been pretty ad hoc and sometimes unprofessional. It's pe people get thrown into jobs, sink or swim, maybe they're handed a manual to read. Um, probably the most common way of training is hands-on where someone shows you the job, you work with somebody, they show you, you do it, they show you, you do it. <clears throat> and that's pretty effective, and I think many employees prefer that. But there are some other areas where we have training needs that you can't really do the hands-on training as well. And so this is where we really fall down, things like ethics training and um, human um, interactions, harassment, um, any legal requirements of the job, safety regulations. A lot of times we plop people down in front of a computer and they scroll through screens and then click a button that says they did the training. And that's pretty ineffective, as you know. So there are newer training methods. Besides on-the-job training, we have simulation training. And it's some of the new simulations are based on gaming. And they're really quite good. And um, <clears throat> an example might be um, if you're a, new ner a nurse who's new to the operating room, they may put you in front of a screen and you become the person on the screen and you maneuver through the various um, steps of setting up the operating room before the crew arrives. And it's very interactive and um, it's almost like doing it with in the environment itself but without consequences. So if you forget something, nobody dies. And it's, it's, it's very, very effective. And we're gonna see more of that as we move through the years. Um, performance appraisal, we touched on in our motivation section, but again, a lot has to do with setting goals, which you've read about. But performance appraisal process should be an ongoing process throughout the year. It, there should be frequent interactions with employer, employee, um, informal as well as formal, maybe just over a cup of coffee or a short break. You know, how are things going? And information needs to flow in both directions. But we need to set positive stretch goals for employees, ones that are attainable, but also <clears throat> ones that give them purpose. And also, we then need to arm them with the tools they need to actually get there. One of the areas that we're seeing uh, rise up as um, <clears throat> that's, that's receiving a lot of attention today is the diversity that we see in our current workforce. And you can see some of the reasons for this on the screen. In particular, we're seeing an, um, at least four generations now of aged age uh, in the workforce. And you can imagine mixing Generation Z, Millennials, Gen Xers, baby boomers, and even maybe a couple of traditionals in there. It is quite interesting and creates some tensions. But beyond age, there are so many differences. Diversity is about difference, and we applaud that because we know that, studying organizations, that the greater the diversity, the greater the idea creation and innovation that can occur. But also we know that greater tensions come with that. And how we manage those 
if we manage them in a positive way, then we get more of the innovative idea creation. If we manage them in a poorer way, then we get more disputes and issues and problems. So this is something that you'll hear more about and want to be aware of. One of the answers is continuous, open, two-way communication. You know, employees need to know how they're doing, but they also need to be able to feel comfortable passing information up to decision makers. And a good appraisal system can offer feedback and it can happen in both directions. And as if we're having ongoing communication, then the formal appraisal process should have no surprises. It should just be a time to sit down and kind of solidify in writing what you've been talking about over the last several months. So that's my those are my highlights on <clears throat> the human resource management section. And in the meantime, I wanna wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. And then in preparation for our next class, make sure you get on to the Canvas site and participate in the discussion. And then also work on your team presentations. And lastly, don't forget the quiz. I extended the quiz due date until the beginning of class when we meet again. So that gives you a little bit more time. It is now open so you can decide what works best for you around the long holiday weekend if necessary. So have a great week and even better Thanksgiving, and I will see you in class next week. Thank you.